So if you're just joining us, I just suggested maybe you go blow your nose. We're going to be doing um, some alternating nostril breathing today as part of our practice. And if you're stuffed up in your nose, sometimes it doesn't work as well. Although if you are a little stuffed up, sometimes it can actually help you clear up. But it's nice to at least start with, as best you can, a clear nose. So just a little suggestion for you. And we got about one minute and then we'll get started. We will be starting with our Pilates ball today and laying on our sides. So anytime we do our work on our rib cage, we're actually affecting the diaphragm and our ability to breathe deeply into our lungs. And for any breath practice, of course, that can be super beneficial to have more space in there. All right, guys, we are gonna go ahead and get started. There may be one or two more folks joining us. But we'll get started and I'll let them in as they arrive. So we're gonna be taking your Pilates ball. Now remember your Pilates ball is not hard. It's got some give to it. Some people are half full, some people three fourths full. You'll kind of determine what works for you once you get yourself situated. We'll be laying on your right rib cage. So right rib cage with the ball. And then you may want to have a block for your head and maybe a block for in between your thighs or something for some support. It could be a pillow, it could be a blanket or a towel. So the ball is underneath the rib cage and you'll determine it might be closer to your armpit, it might be lower. Um, you'll kind of find a place hopefully where, I don't wanna say it's quote comfortable, but it's not uncomfortable. So, I mean, it's weird. It's got, there's a ball laying underneath you under your side. So um, just find a place that's tolerable for you. And if, no matter what you do, it's not tolerable. You may want to let a little bit of air out of the ball. So you do want to be somewhat supported. If your head's not super dangly. And then in between your thighs with something as nice as well. So that just helps give some support for that low back. So I do oftentimes start our practice with some type of breathing into the ball, whether it's sideline or if it's on your belly or even on your chest. And that's because really a big part of this practice being effective is being able to take some deep, slow breathe, breaths. So our breathing is super important. So once you have yourself situated, maybe close your eyes. If you need more of a guide to know where you're breathing, sometimes it's nice to put your top left hand or even arm on top of your rib cage up on the top side. So the ball is under the right side, left side is up. And then start to deeply breathe. So you will breathe as deeply as you can into the belly, ideally first. And then the ribs will expand and then the breath will fill up to the top like a balloon. And then you exhale until you're completely empty. And continue to breathe like that. So as best you can, belly fills first. So sometimes even placing your hand on your belly to see if it's expanding first can be a nice cue or maybe just feeling the ribs expand. Most of us, if we're stressed or really stuck in this area, tend to breathe just up into the chest, which um, is okay if you're running from a tiger, you're in a stressful situation, even sometimes if you're lifting weights and you need a lot of umph and power quickly, that's fine. But most of the time we should be able to belly breathe. We should be able to breathe expansively into the rib cage. So when we're not needing fight or flight type breaths, we should be breathing deeply. So the next time you inhale, pause at the top of the breath. Just for a moment and then exhale and pause at the bottom of the breath, so empty. And again, breathe in and pause at the top. 
and exhale completely. And exhale until you're empty and hold the breath out for maybe a three count or four counts. And again, we breathe in. Pause. And breathe out. And pause. And then we'll start incorporating some movement with the arm. And you can continue with deep breaths and you can incorporate a pause or not. But as you inhale, let's start sweeping your top left arm around to the left behind you, maybe all the way down towards your glutes and then sweep that arm once again back around. So it's like a big windshield wiper with the arm. So I like to breathe like this, inhale, 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 reach it back, and then exhale, 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 bring it back. And it's slow like that. So it's gonna be a three or four, maybe five count to move and inhale. And same on the way back, exhale, three or four, maybe longer, exhale. And if your shoulder doesn't like this exact range of motion, find a range that is okay in your shoulder, okay? So sometimes that means we only get to go to this sort of diagonal position with this shoulder, okay? For some of us, it's fine to go all the way down to the glutes and sweep it back around. But for some of us, we won't quite go over the head. Maybe it's more towards the ceiling, that's fine. Whatever you're doing is fine. You're breathing, you're moving, you're moving energy. That is what we're doing here. So the next time your left arm goes back or on a diagonal or wherever it lands, stay there. If it's too much on the shoulder or too twisty in the back, you can place your left arm back on that left rib cage. And just think about dropping the left shoulder back towards the earth behind you. It doesn't mean you're doing anything. You're just thinking energetically, melting back towards the earth. If it's fine for the arm to continue to reach to the left, then you reach to the left. One more big breath in and a long breath out. And bring yourself back into that side lying position. And then just for a few breaths, we're going to take your left arm just over the ear. So it's a side stretch here and we'll pause there. And again, it might be on the ground. It might not, it might be bent. It might be straight. It's fine position that feels okay in this side. And two more big breaths. And one more big breath. And we'll slowly start to make our way to side number two. So underneath the left side here. And once again, the setup, ball is under the left side. I have something supporting my head. My knees are bent. This, my knees and my hips are at about 90 degrees, so they're not down, they're up. And I'm supporting in between my thighs. And we'll start with a few deep breaths here with the pause at the top and the pause at the bottom of the breath. And again, if you need some guidance, hand on ribs or maybe hand on belly. Feel the expansion into the belly, into the ribs, up into the chest. And then exhale after you pause and pause the bottom of the breath. And inhale, pause at the top 
and exhale and pause at the bottom. Breathe in and breathe out. After a brief pause, you breathe out and pause again. And then start to move your right arm. Notice this side might feel different. That is normal. Find the range that feels okay. And sometimes it starts off being a little sticky, but as you move, it starts to be a little bit more fluid, a little bit more okay with the movement. Sometimes, not always. So what we're dealing with, not only moving the body like this, but also this myofascial work or fascial work, because it's not, a, myo is muscle. So that means when we're affecting muscle, but sometimes it's not muscle we're affecting. Sometimes it's other soft tissue that we're affecting. So fascial work. So our fascial work is really hydration of the tissue. So hydrating the tissue allows all our soft tissue to slide and glide against each other much easier, which makes things much more comfortable when we're trying to move our bodies. So that's why sometimes when we start to move, at first it's super, I call it sticky. And then as you continue to move or you do some fascial work, release. Sometimes then, all of a sudden, hey, I can move. It's hydrating the tissue, just like a dried out sponge. You add some fluid to that dried out sponge, it gets pliable. One more time and we'll pause. And breathe, either arm extending back or hand can rest on ribs. Find something that's okay in your shoulder and find something that's okay in your back. And one more big breath in and out. And then we'll come back, but we'll stop right over the head here, right arm over the ear, maybe just draping over with a straight arm or a bent elbow. About three more breaths. And slowly, we start to make our way out. All right. So we are going to actually stand up. And there's a couple of ways that we can do this release for the side body. We can do it using a wall or we can do it, if you don't have a wall, you can do it freestanding. It's no problem. I will show you both options. And then you'll also... If you have a wall, be using a ball and a block against the wall eventually. So, and if you don't have a wall, don't worry about it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to, if you have a wall, I'll show you the wall. If you don't have a wall, remember I will show you the other option. Hand against the wall at about my rib level, okay? I'm going to have my left hip facing the wall to start. I'm going to cross my left foot over. So you'll notice my feet are like that. Okay. And then I'm enough away from the wall that I have somewhere to lean. And again, if you don't have a wall, don't worry, I got you. I'll be right there showing you what to do. So you're going to be reaching up towards the ceiling, letting your hip pop out to the right. So maybe my left knee bends in the front and I lean towards the wall. Now, if you don't have a wall, guess what? You can use, put your left hand on your own hip and do the same kind of thing. So I'm reaching up and over, so I'm getting a stretch through my right 
side body here. Now, one more option, if you're freestanding, not against a wall, you could catch your wrist up here at the top. So I'm catching my right wrist, giving it just a little tug. If you've got any shoulder stuff, be careful. And leaning over to the side here. So I'm either against the wall or I'm freestanding. Both are great options. Go ahead and find your way back up. Now, all we're going to do is switch and put the left foot behind now. Okay, so we're gonna still lean over to the left. And same thing if I'm freestanding, it's just gonna feel a little different. So I'm still leaning over to the left. Might just feel a little different in what I'm feeling in my hip area, in my side, up and over. Remember, I could grab my top wrist. I could take my hand onto my hip. If I had a chair, I could put my hand on a chair, something stable. Good. All right, go ahead and find your way back up. And we're going to switch sides. So if you're against a wall, I've got my right hand on the wall. And again, it's about rib level. And my right foot is over. I'm gonna let my left hip pop out to the left, reach my left hand up, and I'm leaning over to the right. If I'm freestanding, I can be right here, or I might even give just a little tug on that top wrist. If I have a chair, I can put my hand on a chair or a table. And lift it back up. So all I'm gonna do is now switch and now my right foot is behind and I reach up, up, up again and then over. So make sure you're not just dumping into the side. You wanna reach up and then over. So you're lengthening through the body, not dumping over to one side. Breathe into the side body here. All right, and we make our way all the way back up. Okay, so if you have a wall, you'll go ahead and grab a block and a ball, okay? Block and a ball. If you don't, again, I will show you what you can do on the floor as another option. So you can use your block in a variety of ways. So the block is used so that you don't smash your face against your wall. So if you don't have a block, you're gonna be very close to your wall. So you, it still can be done without a block, but uh, this just gives you some space. So I like to use this side of the block, okay? Um, that gives me enough space for me. And I'm going to place the block on the wall and put the ball on this side of the block. It could also go on this flat side, but again, I like to have a little more space so my face isn't smashed against my wall. And then I'm going to be placing the ball right up here by my collarbone, my upper pectoral area. And again, if you don't have a wall, I will come show you your options. So I'm leaning in it's on the right side. I've got my right foot in front of my left. I'm leaning in. I am holding the block with my left hand. And I'm going to start to move my right arm through a range, any range of motion, like a snow angel, some circles, all those things. If you don't have a wall, you could just put that ball against your chest and do this upright, doing some work here. You could even just hold it and move that arm around. Okay, if you don't like that, you could use the block and a ball on the ground. So I'm just going to tuck that ball right in there in that same position. I'll go ahead and support my head with my other hand, and then I can do a very similar thing. Snow angel, I can make some circles. So you'll choose. Upright, sitting, you can do some movement, you can move that arm, or you've got the ball against the block on the wall and you're moving.
So for those of you who are at the wall, we're going to grab the block now with both hands and you're gonna move that ball back and forth. So it ends up going across the pectoral tissue, can touch your collarbone, it's not on the neck. So right in that upper chest area, it moves back and forth across your block, back and forth across your chest. You can do this like this with your own two hands or even one hand. This isn't as accessible on if you're doing the on your belly one, I mean, you could, you got to put both hands on the ground and start to move it back and forth. So it's not quite as comfortable. So this pectoral area, if it is tight, and for any of us who sit at a desk or have for many years, it's probably tight from this, driving, all those things. If this is pulling this, this shoulder forward, lots of repercussions that can cause neck issues. It can cause shoulder issues. And of course that can work its way down to the elbow and even the wrist. So opening up this chest is so, so, so important. So sometimes things will show up in your upper trapezius. You think, oh, that's where I need to work. But really it's this upper pectoral chest area that really needs to be addressed for many of us. So just about three more breaths on this same right side. Go side to side. You can get really intuitive here with what makes sense for you and your body. You can pause for a moment. Sometimes coming closer to the armpit area on this pectoral chest region can be really tender and tight. When you feel ready, go ahead and start to make your way to side number two, and I'll review all of these. So again, if you're using the block against the wall, I like to use this side. So here's the flat side. I've got the, I guess it's the long side. So not the tall side. So I'm not like this. I feel like that's a little too precarious for me. I end up worrying I'm going to smash my face on the wall. So right like there, or you can, on the left side now, roll it here, or you can absolutely lay down and do it here. Now, if you're at the wall, you can start with some of these arm movements. Make sure that ball is secure. Make sure it doesn't slip down or off. And you are in control of how much pressure is on there. The farther I move my feet back, the more of my weight presses on there. If you're doing it on the floor, you're gonna be more on this flat side. I angle that block so I've got some space for myself in there. And then same kind of movement with my arm. And I'm breathing, take a deep breath. This area can get very tight too if we tend to chest breathe all the time. And that's that, yeah, it's, it's appropriate. Fight or flight kind of breathing is absolutely appropriate at certain times. But many of us live in this chest and even throat breath. And that uh, takes its repercussions. It has repercussions for sure after a while. And then if you're on the wall, yes, if you haven't already, you're going to start to move side to side. And again, be careful the ball doesn't fall off of the block. For me, pausing sometimes closer to my armpit area, that can get very tense for me. Just a handful more breaths. And then you have two choices. We're going to now stretch this area. You can either come back to the floor if you like to do your chest stretching on the floor. I'll show you that one. But if you'd like to stay standing and you want to do it at the wall, let's go in with an open palm against the wall with a fairly straight arm. And then you start to work your way 
My right arm is out. I'm working my way to the left. And I might see if it feels a little better up or it feels a little better down. Where you wanna be feeling this is through the arm into the chest and shoulder area. And if you like the one where you lay down on your belly and roll on top of your arm, you're more than welcome to also do that one. Pay attention to how your back feels. If it's too twisty in your back to step your left leg over, then maybe keep your knees bent. Okay, and then you can use your left hand to help push you whatever amount is appropriate. Sometimes a block under the head might feel good. So you're laying or you're standing and you're breathing. Take two more big breaths here. We're not going to switch sides quite yet. So if you're at the wall, start to make your way out and then bend your elbow about 90 degrees and then start to turn back to the left. And if you're on the ground, you're going to do the same thing. You'll come to about a 90-ish, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then you roll back into this stretch. So it's probably going to feel a little different in terms of where you're feeling that in your chest and shoulder. So make sure your right arm is out to the right and then you're rolling onto your right side. So right arm out to the right and then roll onto your right arm. So start on your belly. I'm gonna talk you through this. Start on your belly. Take your right arm straight out to the right and roll to the right. Yes. Awesome. Perfect. Nice. All right. So if you just made your way into it, take your time and then you'll eventually switch sides. If you are ready for side number two, we'll start with the straight arm. And again, you're either at the wall or you're on the floor. And so the left arm will be behind you when you rotate to the right. Or again, if I'm doing this on the floor, my left arm goes out and I roll on top of my left arm. And whatever feels okay in my torso in terms of these legs. So for some people, stepping that top leg over feels fine. And for some people, it doesn't. So really honor that. Try to pull your left shoulder back a bit. So just one minor adjustment. Try not to let the left shoulder fall forward. Roll it back. That's easy. whether you're on the floor or whether you're on the wall. Try not to let some compensation happen with this left shoulder rolling forward. So start to make your way out just for a moment and then we'll do the bent elbow version. So yet again, if you're at the wall, bend that elbow and then start to turn to the right. Keep that shoulder rolling back. Careful it doesn't start to roll forward. If you're on the floor. You may not be able to go quite as far with this bent elbow. That's normal and adjust. If it doesn't feel good to have it at 90, maybe you straighten it just slightly. Maybe it comes higher or lower. All right, let's start to make our way out. Okay, so we've prepared ourselves We've got our breath expanded, our chest is open. Now we're going to do that alternating nostril breath that I mentioned. If you didn't have a chance to blow your nose, you may want to do that real quick. Sometimes sitting on a block or something to keep your spine long is nice. So if that means you actually move over to sit on a chair, that is fine. It's important when you're doing any kind of breath work that in no way, shape or form are you slouching. 
there's no way you're going to be able to expand into your rib cage if you are slouching. So maybe even sitting up against a wall. So if there's nothing you can do to keep your spine neutral, then maybe sit against a wall, whatever's comfortable. You don't even have to sit cross-legged. So the most important thing again is that spine. All right. So once you have yourself situated, we're gonna take your right hand, your two peace fingers are going to go in between your eyebrows, okay? And then your right thumb hovers over your right nostril and your right ring finger hovers over your left nostril. So we're not touching them yet, we're just hovering over. So then take a really big breath in and we'll do this maybe with eyes open for a few rounds. And then once you get it, probably eyes closed will help. So we'll breathe in deeply through the nose and exhale completely also through the nose. And then close off your right nostril. You don't have to smash it just enough to close it off and then breathe in through the left nostril. Close the left nostril, release the right, exhale. Inhale right, close right, exhale, release left. Inhale left. Close left, release right, exhale. If your arm gets tired, you can support it with your left hand underneath your elbow. Inhale right. Maybe you close your eyes now if you feel comfortable. Close right, exhale left. Relax your shoulders, inhale left. Close left, release right, exhale. Inhale right. Close right, release left, exhale. And continue, inhale left. If you are having a terrible time doing this, Believe it or not, you can just imagine it and it has a similar effect. Exhale right. So you could imagine inhaling right. And you can imagine closing off the right and exhaling left. And it will have a similar effect. Inhale left. Close off left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close off right, exhale left. Inhale left. Close left, exhale right. And one more time, inhale right, close right, exhale left. Release your hands, take a big breath in through the nose, and exhale through the nose. You can open your eyes, That is a wonderful way to start your day. If you are feeling in any way, shape or form fuzzy in your head or even it can help release stress. It can calm the mind. Awesome practice to balance the two sides of your brain. And like I said, believe it or not, even if like some people have really stuffed up or deviated septum, they can't do the actual practice just imagining it 
can have a very similar effect. The breathing in and out through the nose without the closing off of the nostrils. All right, so we are going to take your single ball and we're going to now go take it to the upper right trapezius. So I mentioned earlier that sometimes we end up with tension up in here because we're tight in here. Well, we've released this now. So hopefully now when we release this upper trapezius area, we have a really nice releasing effect. You may want a block also. So go ahead and lay yourself down and you'll place the ball at your upper trapezius. And I will place it there and then I'll come show you a little closer um, where that is. Some of you may decide you want a block underneath your hips, or you might just lift your hips up dy dynamically and hold them there if that works better for you. So your trapezius area is not on my neck. It's not on my shoulder, not that any of those are necessarily wrong. We're right here in the middle, in between those two. It's that spot where you go, oh, can you just rub right here? This, oh yeah. So for many of us, we hold tension there. And oftentimes, as I mentioned, it's a result of the tight muscles in the front, tight tissue in the front, but we've released those already. So now we should have a nice effect on this trapezius area. So taking your right arm, moving it around again, like a snow angel or Cross the body, reach it up. You could even bring that arm straight back and just lay it there. You can move around. So maybe I shimmy myself side to side a bit. Sometimes I need more pressure. So I actually lift my hips up. Okay, if you need less, I would recommend one of two things. A, don't use the block. <laughs> so the block is going to put more of your body weight on that ball. Or You've got your handy dandy wall. You can take yourself to the wall and do a very similar kind of thing. Our moves, or again, I can shimmy side to side. And it's nice to know this can be done at a wall because you know, the floor isn't always accessible to us when we need to release these traps. Maybe moving your arm in particular ranges of motion that you often do. So, you know, if you're a tennis player, overhead serving kind of thing, pushing, pulling, and sometimes just, again, that snow angel is a nice sweeping motion that tends to get a lot of the parts that are stiff and tight and stuck. And you might play with the positioning of that ball. Maybe it is a little closer to the neck. Maybe it is a little closer to the shoulder. When you feel ready, go ahead and transition that ball to your left side and check in. This side will probably feel different. Maybe this side, you don't use a block. Maybe this side, the wall is a better choice. Remember, we're never trying to go to something that feels like a 10 in terms of intensity. That's too much. So the whole like no pain, no gain thing is not what we're going for. So we've got to really convince the tissue to soften. If we overdo it, we're going to head back into that. The muscles are going to protect themselves. The tissue will try to protect themselves. They'll go into a fight or flight state and tense up rather than relax. So that's super intense, move the ball, a little left or right or up or down, decrease the intensity by taking yourself off of the block or take it to the wall or come onto carpet instead of a hard surface. If you're on a hard surface, maybe you need to come to more of a carpeted, softer surface. 
check in with your breath. Are you able to take a deep breath? If you're not, it's probably too much. All right, so we are going to go back to the first side. However, we're going to come more onto like almost like the shoulder blade area. So I'm a little bit lateral. I'm kind of showing you here, but I'm going to get up and show you a little closer. So I've got the ball on the outer right shoulder blade area. So right around in here. This can be pretty intense. So adjust the ball accordingly, up or down, maybe more lateral, or again, you can take it to the wall. Same kinds of movements. And again, maybe, maybe you have a block, maybe you don't. Can roll side to side. Play with the arm position and roll side to side. If I lean a little bit to the right, of course, I've got a little more, more of my body weight on there. So it can be more intense, which might be appropriate. It might not. So I'm tapping in a little bit to my latissimus, my lat. Your sideline, if your head is dangling, maybe put a block there. And I'm not completely on my side. I'm somewhere in between my back and my side. And that's what's working for me. You could absolutely go completely on your side. That's pretty intense. So be careful. More is not always better. All right, let's do side number two. <laughs> block or no block, on the floor, on the wall, reach the arm, move the arm. Breathe. Hmm. Can start to transition slightly to the left if that works for you. Maybe a block under the head would feel better. Maybe I make my way completely onto the left side. That's a lot, so be careful. Maybe I actually pause for a moment and just breathe. About three more big, big breaths. And start to make your way off of ball. So we'll find our way onto hands and knees. So from here, moving through some 
basic cat cows. So my wrists are underneath my shoulders and I'll start with my chin tucking and really trying to round out that upper back and even just slightly leaning forward. And I might feel a stretch through all of this middle upper back area. And then from there, I lead with my chest lowering and pulling forward and then think about how long can I get all of this space in my chest and even my throat without crunching back, I'm getting longer through my neck. Tuck the chin, round that upper back, maybe a slight lean forward and then inhale, chest lowers and pulls forward, shoulders back, lengthen, maybe even heels of the hands pull down and back. Tuck and round again. And lift and lengthen again. Beautiful. Leave your left hand on the ground. Take your right hand behind your head. From here, spin your right ribs up and elbow comes to the ceiling. Take a breath in. And then exhale, right elbow down and across towards your left knee. So you're rounding your spine. And whatever range is fine. You don't have to actually touch your knee. Right elbow spins open, right ribs open towards the ceiling. Exhale, tuck and round across. Hips move back. Inhale up. Exhale, under and across towards the opposite knee. All right, inhale up, a little different this time. As I come down, now I'm going to sweep my right arm under, and this might be where I stay with the back of my shoulder on the earth. I might then bring my forehead to the back of my left hand. For some of us, this is perfect. We feel the back of the shoulder, some of that area we just rolled. For some of us, bringing the hips back closer to the heels is going to give us what we need. And for some of us, we may lay all the way down on top of the arm. Now make sure you don't start to roll to the right to take the stretch off of the arm if you make that choice. You want to roll your chest towards the ground, towards that towards your mat. So you wanna make sure that you're feeling a stretch in the back of the right shoulder here. Maybe even into that lat and trapezius area where we just rolled. Good, take three more big, big breaths. You guys look good. One more big breath in and out. And then we'll come out of that. And we'll do the other side. So right hand is on the ground, left hand to the back of the head. Inhale, spin from the rib cage, open, 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 and exhale under across the opposite knee. And then inhale up. Remember, you don't have to, have to actually touch the knee. Just moving in that direction. Inhale up. Exhale down. All right. Inhale up. And then the left arm sweeps under and across. Laying on that arm, forehead to the back of the opposite hand. Maybe the hips move back towards the heels. Or maybe you lay on top of the arm. Once again, make sure you don't start to roll to the left and take the stretch off of the arm. Let's keep that nice release happening on the back of the shoulder into the shoulder blade maybe. Should not be pinchy. If it's pinchy, adjust the angle of the arm. It might need to go a little higher or a little lower. You wanna be feeling the back of that shoulder, maybe even into some of the latissimus and trapezius area, beautiful. 
And three more big, big breaths in and out. Soften, soften. Good. One more big breath in and out. Okay. And start to make your way out. Okay, so we're going to come back onto hands and knees. If your knees need a break, please take it. Come off of the knees for a second. I totally understand. But if you can stay on the knees, go ahead and join me here to walk both sets of hands and arms in the direction of the left corner of the mat. So for some of us, we're just gonna do this and reach. Hips can stay high. Hips could move back, do what feels like you're getting the best release on this right side. For some of us, adding elevation, hand or hands on blocks might give us more of what we need. Maybe you have both hands on blocks or maybe just the right one. That one's the really the one that we're stretching here. And remember, you can bring hips back towards heels or they could stay upright. Neither is right or wrong. You wanna do the one that allows you to feel through this latissimus and not pinching in the shoulder. So find the one that's going to be appropriate for you. Hands on block or blocks or none. And remember the angle is going to be personal too. So I might be straight towards the corner or I might be past that. Or maybe some of us barely angle because the shoulder doesn't like it. After your next exhale, we switch sides. So walking it over to the right, so we'll stretch the left side now. Left arm really reaches, maybe on a block. Breathe into the ribs. Hmm. Good. And a nice big breath in and out. Awesome. And we'll come out of that. So we're going to release a little bit of the front of the neck. Again, this can be an area, if this is tight in here, it pulls the head forward, which actually creates tension on the back for many of us, can even, even give us headaches. So what we want to do here is, again, a nice tall spine. So just be careful, again, that you're not slouching. So you're either sitting on a block, some of you might choose to actually stand or again, use a wall. So I'm gonna come a little bit closer here. So these are your scalenes in the front of the neck. And again, they can get very tight and pull your head forward. So we're gonna take your right hand to the left side of your upper chest. So I've got my hand next to my collarbone here. So I've got it pulling down and then I'm taking my left hand on top of my right hand. And then from there, I'm tilting my chin up and a little tilt to the right. So I am releasing this left side right now. So my nose aims towards the ceiling. I am not crunching into the back. So if I'm just dumping backwards, all I'm gonna feel is pinching back here. Pull on that skin, lengthen. We're trying to lengthen all of this in the front. You'll notice if you close your mouth and even jut your chin forward, you might even feel a little more. But you don't need to do too much, just deeply breathe and think of length in the front of the left side of your neck. All right, let's bring it carefully back to center. We'll switch sides. So left hand to the right upper pectoral, right underneath my collarbone. And then my right hand assists and we Tug the skin down, turn just slightly, nose and chin moves 
up. I'm not thinking of dumping backwards. Breathe. And bring your head back up, right in the center. We're gonna pull straight down, whichever hand on top doesn't matter. Now I'm thinking of the whole front of the neck lengthening. I am in no way, shape or form just dumping backwards. Pull straight down and think of my chin aiming up sort of on a diagonal. Relax the shoulders. And then release that. And then clasp your hands behind you, interlace your fingers, roll those shoulders back. If that's accessible for you, if it's not, just bring your hands down so the shoulders are down. Take your ear to the right shoulder and then very slowly, we circle the head. Now, when you do go to the back, again, it's not a dump back. Think of that same more of a length in the front as we circle around. And we'll do a few times this direction and then we'll switch. Go the other direction, super slow. All right, and then you're going to be laying down. You have two options. You can either use your ball or your block, whichever feels the most comfortable. We're gonna do your Shavasana with elevated hips today. So either block or ball on your tailbone. So not where your back arches, but on your tailbone. So your hips will actually be slightly tilted towards you. Anytime we have those hips higher than our heart, it does help us come into a restorative state. Rest, digest, recover. And I recommend just leaving the soles of the feet on the earth so it's not extreme. Lay your arms alongside your body. Take a big belly breath. And this time open your mouth and Fly it out, let it all go. Let your body melt into the earth. Let your breath go. Nothing to do now, but just to be. As you lay and just allow yourself to be held by the earth, just know that you have done everything you needed to do today to bring you into a state where your body and your mind 
your soul can begin its own healing process. And start to deepen your breath. Begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes and your ankles and your wrists. Very carefully press into your feet to lift yourself up and off of your ball or your block. Roll to the side for a really gentle transition up to sit. Bring your hands to your heart center. Gentle bow of the head in gratitude, this body, this life, this practice. And then bringing your thumbs to your third eye, middle of the forehead, the divine light in me honors and sees the divine light in all of you. Namaste. So good to see all of you. Have a really great day, guys. Bye.